Hey there, I'm Senator Jen Kim, and I'm at King's University College, ready to go into the press conference for the founder of Free Children, Craig Kilberger. So let's uh, see what he has to say. Okay, so I guess um, I wanted to ask you, I guess, um, how do you keep up this motivation to continue this um, every year? I met you, well, I didn't meet you, but I came to my high school and you were a lot younger, and I was a lot younger. <laughs> but uh, well, how do you, you to uh, Dr. Dennison? Okay. Okay. But um, how do you keep like getting this motivation to do it? All these speeches, all the help you've done, all the change that you wanted to do. We get to see the change happen in real life. Uh, we get to see it happen every day, and because seeing the tangible aspects, it makes it quite easy to keep giving the talks, to keep connecting with the message. You know, most recently it was just in Haiti. Actually, most recently it was in India. Just before that, it was in Haiti uh, for the anniversary, um, looking at the one year. And you know, we've recently shipped 4.7 million dollars worth of medical supplies. We just finished our 11th school. We have 2,000 kids in schools we built in Haiti now. Seeing that impact, and that's just one country where our projects are around the world. That's why we do what we do, and why we keep doing what we do. Kaylee, do you want to go next? Yeah, sure. I'm from Gazette News, our newspaper here. Oh, sure. Um, so I want to, you started out at a very young age, obviously. Mm -hmm. um, and as university students, I feel like we have even more opportunities than you had um, to make a difference, but we often don't. And I just wonder why you think that is, and whether or not young adults are just systematically apathetic. No, the last <laughs> part of that question, um, and then to work my way backwards. You know, when you look through the history of social change, youth have always been at the forefront. Uh, if you look at everything from, you know, Gandhi's self marches, it's actually children who march in the front so the British government wouldn't arrest them, to the civil rights marches in the States that you had students, mostly, you know, college, university students, even high school students, who would march in front of Dr. King or face the water cannons and the attack dogs and the freedom riots that were organized. Uh, you look at the Tiananmen Square uprising in China, students who stood in front of tanks um, looking for democracy. You know, students who were shot as they marched in South Africa against apartheid in the Soweto uprisings. So, are students apathetic? Absolutely not. Um, I think students are the most powerful force for social change in the world. Now, our generation isn't called, thankfully, to stand in front of tanks um, or to stand up in front of you know, attack dogs or water cannons, but we still are called to stand in our own way. And you know, you look at the number of students here at Kings who have chosen social justice. You know, you look at the students who are joining us this evening for the talk. I don't think students are apathetic at all, but it's a means, I think what students often look for is a means to channel that passion into action. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's actually why for this world is being successful, because we give students a way to help. All we are is a network of students. You know, now more than a million, but it's a network of students who get involved working on these type of causes around the world. So I think that students are looking for that way to take action. And I think that traditional charity has undersold them on their potential. I think that we need to not only talk about giving donations or volunteering our time, but a lifestyle of social change. From how we vote to how we shop, you know, looking at ethical consumption, to the news that we consume, to opening our eyes about the world, to how we travel and, you know, volunteerships are social responsible. I think that students don't often realize the true power they hold as consumers, as citizens, as individuals for social change. Uh, and that's in essence what I want to talk about this evening, is how do we transcend beyond just charity to a lifestyle of social change. Thank you. Thank you. All right, so um, I'm a student senator here at Western, and sure. um, I'm here with Pat over there, and it's, this is called Bus on the Bus. It's our <laughs> student uh, television show. Bus on the Bus? Bus on the Bus. <laughs> bus on the Bus. <laughs> Bus. Exactly. Bus. Got bus it. on the bus. Thank you. Exactly. Bus on the bus. Um, you should do <laughs> outtakes where there are people who you're interviewing. <laughs> <laughs> There's distinct possibility here. Yeah. So uh, we try to tell the students uh, what's been going on in the Senate level. Awesome. Um, yeah, academically and all that. Fabulous. So uh, my question would be, how can university students get involved? With the children in general? Mm -hmm. You'll want both. Well, a lot of students have already gotten involved having to uh, run a campaign we have called Brick by Brick. Mm -hmm. So students here at Kings, and I imagine students across Western are being part of this, have gotten involved from pub nights to sports tournaments to bake sales, helping to build a sister school in Kenya. So imagine, you know, literally halfway around the world, the chance for the students here to go travel and to visit their sister school, to teach, to connect. In fact, that's my challenge I would launch to some of the students here, is to have that opportunity to go to their sister school and to have that very real tangible link come alive. We run a series of campaigns throughout the year, so we'd love to strengthen that student group here if they're interested to adopt more of those campaigns. 
Um, and then, you know, from Adopt a Village, so again, what they're doing with starting with the school, we'd like to challenge the, the wider Western community to join what they're doing here at King's. King's is building a school. Um, the wider Western community to come to adopt the other elements of that village, clean water, medical, alternative income, and literally to adopt that full model of what's necessary for, for development. Uh, what we, we, and we do actually call it adopt a village, and the four pillars are again education, clean water, health, and alternative income, and it's an economically sustainable model to lift a community out of poverty. And so imagine a Kings in the Western having a, a community halfway around the world that they were able to empower. Um, and again, not just fundraise, it would be great to have a chance to actually connect in a very tangible way, including volunteering in that community. So we'd love to see that happen. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome. We have time for one more question. So if you guys want to take it. Um, or, yeah. Yes. When you were 12 years old and you started all this, did you ever think that it would turn out as big as it's become, all your projects and everything that you've done? Did you ever think it would turn out the way it has? When we started the organization originally, uh, there were 12 of us, we were all 12 years old, so we named it the group of 12 12 year olds. <laughs> <laughs> we literally thought that was as big as it was going to get, so the group of 12 12. We didn't even think of the fact that you know one of us had our 15th birthday and then we realized the name didn't work very well. <laughs> like, that was literally the organization. Um, you know, today we have 3,500 chapters, we have field offices in a dozen plus countries, um, projects ranging from 650 schools, 30,000 alternative income projects, clean water medical for over a million people around the world. Um, you know, we now have a social enterprise division that works to try to bring our admin costs down to zero and a unique model in charity so that every penny raised will go directly to projects. Um, you know, the largest Made in Canada organic clothing line, a publishing division, and um, a travel division, and an artisan division. Never would have imagined any of this would ever exist. Um, and it's still fundamentally the stuff, the, the value of who we are still hasn't changed. We're just a group of students who are passionate about changing the world. Some of us now graduated from students, mind you, but we're still equally as passionate about changing the world. But never could have imagined it would grow this large. Very cool. Very cool. Thank Pleasure. You. Thank you. Thank you guys so much for coming. Uh, the apps of these aftershocks were incredibly strong. A little before 5 a.m., we were woken, uh, the ground was shaking, we barely could even get to our feet, we were scrambling. And all the children were running, they went running away from the building, away from the walls, towards the soccer field because they were so afraid about the building collapse. They went running except two young kids, an eight-year-old and a ten-year-old. They went running, but they stopped. And then they went running back towards the building. We were shouting at them and screaming at them in French and in Creole. You know, what are you doing? Turn around, go this way. And, you know, you know finally we started going after them, unsure of what was going on. It turned out these two kids were running back towards the building, back towards the danger, to get a mattress. Because one of their friends, a 10-year-old boy named David, he had broken his leg in that original earthquake, and, and his... He was in a cast, he couldn't run. And so they're grabbing this mattress to place him on the mattress and to half drag, half carry him away from the danger. This is David, <laughs> the two kids. And I share this story because it was an eight year old, 10 year old. And such basic human compassion. You know, we see the worst of the world in war and violence. <coughs> But so rarely do the news show us the best of the world. And I'm very conscious that though I stand in Kings, which was, you know, welcome students of all walks of life, it was founded with Catholic traditions. And so I leave with the words of Mother Teresa, one of my great heroes. I had the honor to work alongside her in Calcutta before she passed away. And as she walked me to the mother house at the end, I asked her, how do you do it? Every single day, how do you work with people around you who are suffering and who are dying when you know that you can't help every single person? And she took my hands and she looked me in the eyes and she smiled at the question. And she said, you have to realize in our lives we can do no great things. But we can do small things with great love. We can do no great things, but we can do small things with great love. And she said, that's how we change this world for the better.
Mike's speech will have a monumental impact here at King's. Um, he talks a lot about how there's a lot of differences between business majors and I guess social justice and peace majors, but he also talks about how really the two things can be can work together and like for a better cause. Throughout high school, I was involved with uh, different fundraisers for Free the Children, and I was up actually able to attend We Day when I was in grade 10. Um, so it was really just like so amazing for me to come in and see him and get him to hear, uh, like to hear him speak about everything and how we start everything. And it's uh, it was just a giant cup of perspective and exactly um, something that I feel like we need here at the university. Uh, well, first of all, thanks to uh, Students' Council for uh, bringing this up. Uh, I think it's a relevant message for a generation such as ours to hear. Uh, but more so, I think, personally, I would have loved to him to speak on uh, some of the real challenges that, as a non-profit organization, they face. Because uh, the audience here, especially at King's, is a very, um, uh, it's not an apathetic audience. Uh, these are students, most of whom are social justice, and also from uh, the business end of uh, things that are more uh, in tune and aware and also passionate about social justice. Uh, and so these are challenges that I think, uh, if he had pointed out how um, an NGO like his uh, deals with uh, the challenge, the bureaucratic stagnancy, uh, the loggerheads with government officials and all that, uh, that would have been more useful. But generally, brilliant, brilliant night, great opportunity, very inspirational. So that's it, that's brilliant, it was a brilliant night. We as a council decided at our last, um, at our budget meeting in the summer, um, that Craig Kilberger would be a great uh, speaker to bring to Kings um, for a few reasons. One being um, that it's a very strong uh, social justice um, school, and as a social justice speaker, um, we thought that um, he would have a lot to say to not only the Kings community, but the Western and London community as well. Um, he brings a lot of advice, a lot of experience, and a lot of um, insight into um, the people overseas and um, how we can affect change not only in our local community but also in the whole community as well. So we were very, very excited to have him come and I'm thrilled that it happened tonight and um, I think he got great reception from the past community. Well, I knew him from Bangladesh and he's one of our Canadian heroes at uh, such a young age. He's done so much and he's such an inspiration to students of all walks of life. So uh, we could. I had to go through all the schedules, but then again, it all worked out fine right at the end. And um, like bringing the social justice and peace students, as well as the BMOS students together as a united campus for changing our community for, uh, in a positive turn, as well as working in, uh, internationally uh, for a better world. I'm Craig Kibberger, founder of Free the Children. Thanks for watching Fuss on the Bus. <laughs>